Hey guys, good to be back with this latest video in the Jenkins Advanced series. So, in our first video of the Jenkins Advanced series, what we saw is we saw about Jenkins security, uh, that is Active Directory integration. Later, we saw about the Jenkins user management and how to delegate access between different folders inside the Jenkins. And finally, we saw about the config.xml file and why it is very very important as far as Jenkins is concerned. So if you haven't watched that video yet, just click on the top right corner so that you don't miss out. Okay, what we are going to cover in this video is one of the most important topics as far as Jenkins is concerned. That is none other than pipelines. So, when you hear the word pipeline, what comes to your mind? <laughs> Definitely not that. Focus. So yeah, obviously, it's the Jenkins pipeline that comes into our minds of the DevOps folks. So in this video, we are going to cover about pipelines. And as I mentioned earlier, it's one of the important topics. I'm going to cover it over two videos rather than a single video because I don't want to squeeze it. That's it. Okay, with that being said, why wait? So, this is Rajesh and you are watching A pipeline is nothing but collection of two or more jobs which are connected in such a way that they are executed sequentially. So, if you have watched our CI video earlier where we integrated static code analysis, unit tests and building the artifact, what we did there is, we did all of that in a single job using a single Maven code. But in the real world scenario, we actually split those into individual jobs and execute them. The reason behind this is, a proper production code will be complicated one and we will be needing to do a lot of customizations at each stage like publishing the test results over an email or uh, pushing the artifact into JFrog or Nexus etc. So these customizations cannot be done if you write a simple one line maven code. Ok enough of the theory part, let's see what it is through Jenkins UI. One thing I want to highlight is, as we are progressing through the Jenkins series, we will also be following the real world setup as closely as possible. So in this video, you can see that SonarCube is running on a separate EC2 instance and Jenkins is running on another EC2 instance, which I will show you guys shortly. As SonarCube is running on a different server, we need to do some setup in the background so that it is integrated with Jenkins. As that is not the scope of this video, I am not going to cover it. Still, if you guys feel that you want a video on that, just let me know in the comments. Ok, as starters, what I am going to do is, I am creating 3 new jobs called Unit Test, Code Analysis and Package. And as the names are self explanatory, each job will be executing its part of the continuous integration. For the code analysis job, you can see that the Sona servers is running on a different EC2 instance as I mentioned earlier.
Now that we have all three jobs, let's execute our first build and see how it progresses. Ok, now we can see that all the jobs are success and the code analysis is being pushed to the sonar which is running on another EC2 instance. Now what we are going to do is, we are going to interconnect these jobs or to put it simply, we are going to chain these jobs in such a way that it executes sequentially. The order that I am considering in this video is first job will be unit test job, the second would be code analysis and the third will be the package job. So we want our code analysis job to be executed after the unit test job. So in order to achieve that I am opening the code analysis job and under the build triggers I will mention as execute this job only when the first job is completed and you can also see that I am going to execute this only if the build is stable and success. Now in the same way we are going to pass the same condition for the package job only to be triggered once the code analysis job which is its predecessor job is success. Okay, add time. Unfortunately, our channel isn't monetized yet and that's why we thought we'd put an ad about our channel so that you don't forget to subscribe, hit like, comment and share. Got it? As we are now changed these jobs, let's trigger our initial job that is the unit test job. And we can see here that code analysis is marked as the downstream job which means that this is a job which is going to get triggered after the initial job succeeds. Now let's check the console output and as we can see here the downstream job has been successfully triggered. I'm just gonna open that job too and we can see that build is in progress. Let's check the output. This job has one upstream job and one downstream job. Okay, the last job build is also triggered and if we check the status. This also is a success. One bottleneck here is, unless we open a job, we have no way of finding out which jobs are connected. So to help us get a clear view of the jobs and the pipeline flow, there are a couple of plugins which will help us. So let me open the manage plugins from the manage Jenkins dashboard and search for the plugin called delivery pipeline. And you can see a small description about what what this plugin is used for. Uh, just let me complete the installation of this plugin. Now we can click the new view from the dashboard and we can see that delivery pipeline option is present. Just select the first one which is commonly used for the upstream and downstream jobs. I will explain later in the next video why the second one, why and where the second one will be used.
I'm just going to enter a name for this view. Uh, we can give it whatever name you like. And we can see that there are so many settings which you can play around with. And I'm just going to enable build option. To be frank, you can explore most of this by yourself. Uh, you shouldn't face any issues here. In the pipeline section, enter a name for this and select which job you want as your initial job and then save it. Ok, now we can see that a new view has been created and as we have already triggered some chain jobs, we can see a neat visualization of the jobs and in which particular order the jobs trigger. This will help any new person who comes into the team or any outsider to understand the flow better rather than opening all the jobs and checking the upstream and downstream jobs. Now if any of the job fails, the next job will not be triggered. Because if you remember, we have enabled the trigger option only to trigger if the previous jobs build is success. And I just want to show you how that looks. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to push the incorrect maven goal which will result in the build failure. And yes, now we can see the initial job is failed and no other jobs has been triggered. Okay, time to check out the other plugin that is the build pipeline plugin. Same, you can find it from the plugin section. Um, let me install that quickly. Uh, looks like this plugin has some security issue. so. Install it at your own risk. I'm just gonna install it uh, for this demo purpose alone. Now let's create a new build pipeline view. And as we can see that there are many options after the installation. Let's configure the same. Same as the previous, we have to enter our initial job, and I'm going to display the last five builds for the better visibility. Cool. Now we can see that the pipeline UI is much better than the delivery pipeline, right? And you can play around with all the options above here. Let's change back the maven go to initial value and trigger the job so that we can see the pipeline flow in this new view. Yeah, now we can see that the jobs are slowly changing to green and the additional benefit of this pipeline is you can see the console output and rerun icon from the view itself and you no need to navigate into the jobs to see the console output or rerun the job. Just adding few points, uh, you can check the build history as well from this option and In future, if you need an extra step that needs to be added, you can add it from the same pipeline view as well. Okay guys, that's a wrap for this video. In this video, we covered the pipeline workflow and different jobs which needs to be made as an individual jobs rather than a single maven go. And how did we change those jobs so that they run in a sequential flow and to view that sequential flow of the job we installed a couple of plugins 
that is delivery pipeline plugin and build pipeline plugin so we get a good pictorial representation of the pipeline workflow so in the part 2 of this video we are going to see about the jenkins pipeline as a code concept that is you are going to write your jenkins pipeline as a code using groovy language okay i don't want to reveal any more about the part 2 and kill the suspense so i'm just going to stop here and see you guys soon in the part 2 take care until then this is rajesh signing off